Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be simulating the full career of a sniper fenceman. In other words, this player is going to be a defenseman, but all of their X-Factor slash abilities are going to be shot-based, and the pass shot bias is going to be entirely in favor of shot. On top of that, they will have 99 for their shot power and accuracy, and they will be a bit of a defensive liability because the whole point is that they're a sniper. They score, they just happen to play defense. It's going to be interesting to see if they can keep up with the forwards and how many points, or I guess mostly goals is what I'm interested in, they can generate. So without further ado, let's jump in and simulate this sniper fenceman's career. Once again, Bedard moved down in the draft projections to number two. Kurt Dangle's supposed to go one. I don't really get that this time around. Also, Flyers winning the draft lottery moved from pick five to one. They would take Kurt, leaving Connor open for the Arizona Coyotes, who is a higher overall and the same potential. So I don't really know what's going on. But anyway, it is going on. Kurt signs with the Flyers, his entry-level contract, 940k plays for the Phantoms in the first year, and they did really well. Fourth in the league with 95 points, and what a cleanup at the award show for our rookie, Kurt Dangle. Demolished the AHL this year, had 77 points in 50 games, but most importantly, almost had a goal a game, just shy of it, with 48 tucks on the season. Ridiculous. No surprises here. Kurt gets called up to the Broad Street Bullies for year number two. He will be on a pair with York, the third pair to be exact. The team does awful, finishing eighth, aka last in the Metro. A dash 33 for Kurt, so not a great introductory season. But next season, moves up to the second pair with Essa Lindell, and the team does a little bit better. 97 points, good enough for second in the Metro. And he led the team. 45 goals, 75 points in 82 games. And they lost... Seven games in the Stanley Cup Final. What a heartbreak. Absolutely hate to see it. Your semi-occasional roster updates for the entire team. So that way we can see what Philly's doing other than just with their defense. They finished fifth in the Metro with 78 points this year. Back out of the playoffs. But point a game from Kurt. 37 goals on the year. Still doesn't lead defensemen though. What a killer season for Adam Fox. And again, playoff updates here and there. We'll get to that later, but I do have something very unfortunate about that. Kurt Dangle on the first pair with Sandheim, 87 overall, signs a new ticket, four years at 10.2. Is that any good? Yes. Yes, it is. The Flyers finish third in the Metro with 102 points, and would you believe it, an Art Ross going home to Curtis. After cleaning up the first year in the AHL, now it is time to do so in the NHL. Several trophies would be in the name of Kurt this year, and the Flyers were deleted round one by the Pity Pens. So other than that very deep run early on, it's been struggles ever since. Stat update here, you can see still a liability defensively. Montembeau, the starting goalie, they sneak into the playoffs with 94 points. Dangle and Matthews both had 105 on the season, 52 tucks from Matthews, 42 from Curtis, who puts up 16 points in 12 playoff games. He would go home with the Lady Bing this season, and they would be waxed by the Columbus Blue Jackets in round number two. Moving on to year eight. Dangle playing with Sandheim yet again. Team only gets 89 points this season, but the Metro clearly kind of weak there, and they make it into the playoffs. 91 points out of Kurt, gets the Norris this season, and they lose to the Jackets. This time it was the first round. A new defensive partner is introduced. We have Oliver Shillington playing with Dangle this season, who I believe is also an offensive defenseman. Maybe, maybe not. The Flyers get 89 points, good enough for third in the Metro yet again. Quinn Hughes leads defenseman with 91 points, but Dangle had 86, so another outstanding year for him. 38 goals as well, so you gotta account for that. A sweep in the first round would take out the Flyers. So they are really struggling here in the playoffs. Shillington once again playing with Dangle, who signs a new three-year $12.7 million contract. Not too shabby. They finish sixth in the Metro this season. Only 77 points. So they will be out of the playoffs for the first time in a bit here. But we do see 89 points out of Kurt. Also 98 out of Quinn Hughes, though. So he's having himself a time. Big bounce back year for the Broad Street Bullies. Finishing first in the Metropolitan Division for, I think, the first time in this video, actually. 
Dangle puts up 110 points, once again taking home the Art Ross and the Norris. No surprise there. And the Philadelphia Flyers lose in round one to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Absolutely ridiculous. Here is an offensive update. It looked pretty solid, I gotta say. Defensively, Kolosov, some abilities in there, gonna be playing with Kurt. I'm sure that they will be very good for each other, just kidding. Because with 87 points, the Flyers miss out on the playoffs. Kurt goes dash 12 and has his weakest season in quite a while. So the Flyers said enough of that. We're giving you Kubalik instead. And also a five-year $17.6 million contract. It's getting paid. But also winning Art Rosses. So it makes sense. With 97 points, the Flyers finish second in the Metro. Kurt has a bounce back year with 93 points. And gets the James Norris. The Flyers also saw some more playoff success this season. Making it to the conference finals, but the Sabres made light work of them there. Kubalik making his return. Clearly, it is working well. Because the Flyers finish second in the Metro again, this time with 105 points. And we see yet another Art Ross for one Curtis Dangle. Absolutely killing it so far. Not so much in the playoffs, though. Back to a first round exit. Offensively, I feel like the team is starting to fall off here. But Kubalik and Dangle working together rather well. So they're going to keep it going and it pays off as they finish first in the league, taking home the President's Trophy. And we see 102 points from Kurt, plus 17 on the season. They would lose to Columbus again. Round two, taking six games. We don't have any words and we know you don't want to hear them. Kurt playing with Carell. On the first pair, no surprises there. It's working, so they're going to keep it going. It's also interesting to me that Kurt has basically peaked at 87 overall. Probably the defensive awareness, because I know that weighs into the stats a lot. But anyway, another Norris Trophy and another second round exit. This time, it was to the New Jersey Devils. However, they did carry over the six games thing. So, at least they're consistent. The Flyers back in the playoffs after finishing fourth in the Metro. Another Norris year for Kurt Dangle, who had 90 points and 43 tucks. And once again, they lose in the second round, taking six games. You almost can't make this up. This is where I am going to announce the unfortunate thing that I said earlier. So, Kurt Dangle is 35, signs a two-year deal at $12 million. I thought there was no way he was going to retire. After this season. So I just skipped it. And sure enough, he did. When I used to do these simulations on the NHL 22 and NHL 21, they played until they were like 48. And now players are retiring so fast. A first round exit to the Montreal Canadiens means that there will be no Stanley Cup for Kurt Dangle. Unfortunately, I was not able to recover the playoff stats. Try to see if there's a backup or anything, but nope. So those are gone. But it doesn't matter that much because their playoff success was lackluster anyways. I was able to get the season stats, however, by going back through all of the footage and manually putting in the numbers. So with just over 1,300 games, our boy had 676 goals and a flat 800 assists for a total of 1,476 points. Despite being a defensive liability, still a plus 99 for his career. And had 6,700 shots. Absurd. I didn't really notice that stat until I went back afterwards and was reviewing the footage. And it really stuck out to me. I mean, I guess it makes sense. When you have a shot that good, you might as well put him on net. The shot pass bias also weighed into that, I would assume. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have other career simulation ideas, go ahead, let me know. And I will see you soon.